guys, Mr. Klein here with our first of our two lessons in our chapter on waves. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the characteristics of waves and the types of waves. In the second lesson of our chapter, we'll be talking about the electromagnetic spectrum and electromagnetic waves in general. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Oh, hey, do, hey, do, oh, ooh, ouch. Well, obviously, whenever we talk about uh, waves, we usually think of something like this, like a ginormous ocean wave with a, off the coast of Hawaii with some guy surfing down chase being chased by the crest of the wave desperately trying to get away only for another mother nature to grasp him just when he thought he got away like that poor guy and you know like i said whenever we go to the beach we generally think of waves you know that that i say what's wave and oh you're like oh waves at a beach now on calm days the waves just look like a little bit of a ripple like you might drop a rock in a pond or something like that but on windier days or if you go out in certain places in the world you have huge waves like we saw at the introduction to this video but what exactly is a wave well in our last chapter we talked about energy and waves have a lot to do with energy Waves in science have a very precise scientific definition, which is this. A wave is a vibration as a result of energy being transferred through an object, okay? Uh, whenever we think of waves, what we're actually thinking of is a specific type of waves, and those are mechanical waves. Mechanical waves are the waves that require matter or a medium in order to move through it. In the next lesson, we're going to be discussing electromagnetic waves, and those don't need a medium to go through it, but... Uh, they have broadly similar principles, which we'll carry over from this lesson. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start our graphic organizer. There you go. Let's start off right there. Waves. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, there are three types of waves. Uh, and so let's go ahead, when we talk about mechanical waves, there's three general types. So let's go into them one by one. Most of the time when we think of waves, we think about what are called transverse waves, or waves where the medium vibrates perpendicular to the direction the wave travels. In other words, the wave moves up and down and the motion of the wave is forward. The high point, of course, of a transverse wave, if you remember from fourth grade, was the crest. And the low point is the trough. Okay, if you're moving a jump rope, that's a good example of a transverse wave. And just for you to remind you, this is what a transverse wave is with particles. As you can see, the wave moves up and down, but if you watch the motion of the wave, it's moving from left to right on your screen. As a result, it's perpendicular to the mo the wave itself is moving perpendicular to the motion of the energy. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at the parts of a transverse wave. As you can see, the direction of the wave is moving from left to right. The crest is the highest point of the wave. The trough is the lowest point. Okay, now that you remember that, let's go ahead and put our graphic organizer together. Okay, transverse waves have a crest and a trough to them. Okay, so make sure you write that down. You can go ahead and pause the video right now. And there you go. So you got that transverse waves, the highest point, the crest, lowest point is the trough. The second type are longitudinal waves. And those are waves where the medium vibrates in the same direction that the wave travels. Okay. So instead of the wave moving up and down, it moves from left to right, just like the energy moving from left and right. Longitudinal waves result in the medium squeezing together then stretching out. Uh, the squeezing together is what we call the compression and the stretching out is what we call the rarefaction. Okay, a spring releasing energy, sound waves, things like that, those are all longitudinal waves. And you're like, Mr. Klein, I don't quite understand what a longitudinal wave looks like. Well, let's look at this example and let's look at the red dots. Okay, as you can see, as you can see, they move from one end to another. And also while you're looking, you see the waves just kind of kind of bunching up together. Where they bunch up, that's the compression. Where they're more stretched out, that's called the rarefaction. Okay, so these are longitudinal waves, things like sound waves, a spring, whenever you let it go and the energy travels through, that is a longitudinal wave. Okay, and let's look at our diagram right here. As you can see, the compression is the really tight part, the really stretched out parts, the rarefaction, and the compressions and rarefactions go in the direction which the energy is traveling. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add to our graphic organizer, longitudinal waves. They have the compression, that's where they're squeezed together. The rarefaction is where they spread out. So I'm going to go ahead, you can go ahead and pause it. And now that you have that written down, let's go to the third type. The third type is what we call surface waves. Surface waves are tra waves that travel along the surface of a medium. Sounds pretty obvious to me. They have properties of both transverse and longitudinal waves, as you're going to see in the example. 
okay? Because the energy is moving both back and forth and up and down, they don't have like a particular motion as much as they move in a circular motion. So you, in some ways you have a compression and a rarefaction just like a longitudinal wave, but you also have a crest and a trough just like a transverse wave. So if we look at this, you can see the circular motion with the yellow, the yellow dots, okay? You can see the waves come together with a compression and a rarefaction, and you can also see them go up and down just like a transverse wave. Well, oftentimes we'll see this with ocean waves. Ocean waves are a great example of a surface wave because on the surface they're cresting and troughing just like a transverse wave. But you get just underneath the surface, you have water particles coming together and spreading apart just like a longitudinal wave. So let's go ahead and let's finish off our graphic organizer and we'll write surface waves and make sure you draw the line around to show that surface waves have the same relationship, have, have different relationships of the transverse and longitudinal waves put together. Okay. And like I said, they go in circular motion, so they don't have like particular parts of them apart from when we're looking at the transverse wave and the longitudinal wave part of it. So we now we need now we know what waves are. We can talk about how we can measure waves, and we measure waves in three major waves. The waves. The first part is its wavelength, or the distance between repeating points in the series of waves. Essentially, it's defining how long the wave is. Okay, so the shorter the wavelength, the more energy it has because it's moving up and down or moving close together and spreading apart. Now, even though you can measure from any two points in a repeating wave, it's generally easier to measure from compression to compression for a longitudinal wave or crest to crest or trough to trough or rarefaction to rarefaction on a different type of wave. So if we look right here, we can see the difference between a longer and a shorter wavelength. Okay, the longer the wavelength, the bigger the distance between crests. Shorter the wavelength, the shorter the distance. Okay, and we'll get into that in the next part whenever we talk about that. So let's go back to our graphic organizer. And we'll create a new column right here. Okay, so we talked about the types of waves. Now we're talking about measuring waves. How wide is the wave? Okay, the, the length of its wave. We check using the wavelength. Okay. And then another important measure is its frequency or the number of waves that passes a point in a certain amount of time. It's kind of like how fast the wave is moving. The more waves that pass in a unit of time, the higher the frequency or the higher the speed. Now, in the metric system, we do have a measure of frequency and that is what we call the hertz okay or one wave passing a fixed point per second okay so if you see a wave pass by you once per second it has a speed or frequency of one hertz whenever we talk about radio waves and stuff like that we talk about the electromagnetic spectrum we'll be talking about things in kilohertz and megahertz and gigahertz and things like that and so that's what we're talking about is that the frequency of the wave passing per second now, if we look at this image right here, we see the difference between high frequency and low frequency waves. And high frequency waves, okay, you see the wavelengths pass. You have a whole lot of them stacked up. And so the wave pa a bunch of waves pass, you know, where you're looking at any period of time. Whereas low frequency, the waves travel much slower. In other words, the wavelength happens in a much more spread out. Okay, so that is frequency. And it tells you how fast the wave is going, okay? So how wide was wavelength, you know, the length of the wave? How fast is its frequency? And finally, we're going to talk about the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance of the vibration of the wave or how much the wave displaces the medium or displaces energy. Measuring amplitude is different from different types of waves. For instance, transverse waves, the ones that go perpendicular to the measurement of the energy, we measure the distance from the crest of the wave and its resting point. The resting point is the distance halfway between the crest and the trough. It's kind of like where the medium would be if it wasn't disturbed. And the greater the distance from the uh, halfway point and the crest or the trough, the greater its amplitude. For longitudinal waves, you measure how compressed or how spread out through the rarefaction the medium is. The closer the article, particles rather are compressed, the greater its amplitude. Okay, So if we look right here, we can see amplitude for both transverse and longitudinal waves. The resting position is halfway between the crest and the trough. The greater the distance from the crest to the resting position is the greater the amplitude. For a longitudinal wave, okay, the closeness of its coils or uh, closeness of the coils. And also we see what a wavelength is for a transverse and a longitudinal wave right here. So let's go ahead and let's wrap up this lesson. Let's wrap up our organizer, how big the wave is, if you will. We look at amplitude. Waves, of course, are just displacing uh, energy displacing something. Okay, we have three major types 
of mechanical waves, and those that are require a medium or an object for the energy to pass through. First are transverse waves. Those are the ones that go uh, perpendicular to the motion of the energy. And that's where we have the crest and the trough, and that's normally what we think of in terms of waves. Longitudinal waves are ones where the compression and rarefaction go in the same direction as the energy. Okay, those are like sound waves. And then surface waves are a combination of the two. And whenever we look at waves, we can measure them in several ways. We can see how long the wave itself is or how wide it is through its wavelength. We can see how fast it's going through the frequency or the number of times waves, number of waves that pass a point per minute at a time. Or we can see how big the wave is or how much the energy is displaced from its resting position through amplitude. So there you go. That's our lesson on waves. In our next lesson, we're going to be looking at the electromagnetic spectrum and the wide variety of of electromagnetic waves that are, we just have differences in frequency and wavelength, and that's all we have. So there you go. That's your lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And if, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.